After these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or on any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. In part one of this series, we learned that the earth and sea of Revelation 7.3 refers to the essence of the first man Adam, which resides in everyone, the natural essence which we are born with when we enter this earthly plane. Science states that on average, around 60% of an adult human's body is water. So, just like the earth surrounds the sea, our human forms encircle the water within. No doubt, God's eternal power and divine nature are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. The trees speak of those things that spring up out of the ground of our heart and fall under the parameters of the law or the promise, condemnation, or love. First, the servants of God are sealed before the four winds are loosed. This aligns with the following. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal, the Lord knows those who are His, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Those sealed are those who, in the early stages of the New Testament church, gave their lives completely and utterly to and for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Among these were the 12 apostles, including the apostle Paul. Just as there has never been any phenomenon like the coming of Christ to the Jews, so too must we include those who followed after, bringing the true and undiluted gospel to the world that then was. In Revelation 7, we have four angels, four corners of the earth, and four winds of the earth. In his book, The Biblical Meaning of Numbers from 1 to 40, Stephen Jones tells us that four is the number of the earth, or the material creation of God. On the fourth day of creation, the material world was finished, thereby allowing God to furnish it with living creatures. Since the platform for the living creatures was finished on the fourth day, four also signifies a foundation. Is it not true that most buildings are built on a four-sided foundation? It is apparent by the phrase, the four corners of the earth, that the loosing of the four winds affects the entire world. As for the four angels, since angels are spirits or winds, we can identify the four angels as the first four spirits of the seven spirits of God described in Isaiah, chapter 11, verses one through four, and first mentioned by John in Revelation 1:4 as before his throne. The first four spirits are wisdom, understanding, counsel, and might. And why do I believe this identifies our four angels? Because a closer look at the next three spirits defines the essence of the four winds. To say it another way, out of the foundation of God's wisdom, understanding, counsel, and might flows his knowledge and fear to humankind summed up in the seventh spirit of God as judgment. No, not judgment as in eternal torment, but rather the discipline of a loving father over his creation. Remember what the souls under the altar cried? They cried out for judgment and vengeance, that is, vindication. And what is the Lord vindicating? Is it not the word of God which these souls declared in perfect agreement with what he had taught them? First, the sealing of the servants of God, typifying the establishment of the New Testament church almost 2,000 years ago. 
Second, the loosing of the four winds of judgment, first with the house of God, followed by the world. Tradition has long taught that there is a judgment coming. But if this is true, how do we explain what Jesus said in the following? Now is the judging of this world. Now shall the chief of this world be cast out. And I, if I should be exalted out of the earth, shall be drawing all to myself. No doubt, judgment is often misunderstood because of the phrase, day of judgment. This phrase is found just eight times in the King James New Testament. But what did Peter say about the day? But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Based on this, one day can be any length of time the Lord desires. This is confirmed by Hebrews 3, 8, and 9, where the day of trial for Israel was 40 years. We are told in Genesis 1.5 that God called the light day. So day is not so much about time as it is about light. And what does light represent? Does it not typify God's righteousness in Christ? With this in mind, consider what Paul said in the following. But now, that is 2,000 years ago, the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed or manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. Friend, a day of the Lord is not a typical 24-hour segment of time, but rather the manifestation of God's will and word in the earth. For God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Would it be appropriate to say then that the revelation of Jesus Christ is the revelation of the day of the Lord, since he is the light of the world? Might this be why John stated, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day? Allow me to speak plainly. I do not believe that judgment is coming. I believe it is and has always been present. The great white throne has always existed for it is the throne of God and his throne is a throne of righteousness. The idea that there must be another judgment in the future is illogical. This idea is fueled by our own human prejudice and need for vengeance and our misunderstanding of those things written in the book of the Revelation. In our next video study, we will show how the four winds reveal several key concepts in the book of the Revelation.